Hey, what's going on everybody? On today's project, I'm gonna show you how to build an adjustable sit-stand desk using a live edge slab. And I wanna give a huge thanks to CoreChair for hooking us up with a new desk chair to go along with the new live edge desk. But more on that later. Let's get into the video. So as you can probably imagine, the first step in building a live edge desk is to source your live edge slab. Now you have a few different options when purchasing a live edge slab. The first kind of most common is just to pick up a live edge slab from your big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's, but their selection is usually pretty limited, unfortunately. The other option is to find kind of a brick and mortar boutique lumber dealer, and they'll usually have a bunch of different species of wood and they usually have a pretty good assortment, but the downside is that they're usually on the pricey side. And the third option, which is the one that I like the most, is Craigslist. Now, although Craigslist is a horrible place to find a roommate, it's actually a great place to find a live edge slab. Go ahead and select your city and then search for live edge slab and you'll be amazed at how many listings show up. Here's a look at the warehouse slash barn where I bought my live edge slab from a guy I found on Craigslist. Once you've found a live edge slab that you like, it's time to take it home and clean it up. For more information on picking the right live edge slab, check out my website where I have this article showing all the things to look for when sourcing your live edge slab. Because my slab was milled flat when I purchased it, the only cleanup work I had to do was just cut off a few of the areas that were protruding a bit more than I liked. To do this, I just used a chalk line to establish a straight line all the way across the back of the desk and then just cut everything off with a circular saw. Next up, I removed any of the bark that was left on the slab. To do this, I just used a chisel and a hammer, and although some people like the look of the bark, it almost always falls off later, so I recommend you just remove it now. In the same area where you just saw me removing bark, I decided to install some butterfly keys or bow ties for some additional strength. In order to make these butterfly keys slash bow ties, I picked up a piece of black walnut from the same guy on Craigslist where I bought the slab. Then, I mapped out the butterfly keys using a pencil on the black walnut and then cut it out using a circular saw. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on this and I don't have a band saw or other really precise equipment that some of these bigger guys do. So I don't want to give you all the nuances of how to make a butterfly key. There are plenty of YouTube videos showing how to do that. But if you only have a circular saw, you can make it work. Once I cut out my butterfly keys, I put some painter's tape down and then marked the outline of each butterfly key with a pencil. Once the locations were marked, I used a down cut spiral bit on my router at a depth slightly shallower than the butterfly keys. Then I cleaned up everything with a chisel. When setting the depth for your router, you wanna make sure that your butterfly keys stick out further than your slab. Again, use your router to sneak up on the line and then do any precision cuts with your chisel. Once you've finished routing your inlays, it's time to actually install the butterfly keys in the butterfly inlay. To do this, I used wood glue and put it all within the, uh, the penetration inlay. And then once I had a sufficient amount of glue, I took my butterfly key and I installed it into the inlay and used a rubber mallet to force it all the way down into position. Once I had installed the first butterfly key, I moved over and I repeated the exact same process for the second butterfly key. Again, that's putting wood glue within the inlay and then setting the butterfly key in the inlay using a rubber mallet. Then give it about 24 hours to dry. Once you've given the wood glue sufficient time to dry, grab some coarse grit sandpaper and sand down the butterfly keys flush to the slab. As you can see, I've sanded one down and now I just need to sand down the other until it's flush with my existing slab. One trick is if you find that the opening for your butterfly keys is actually larger than the butterfly key, is you can use some of the sawdust from your sander and kind of create a paste using wood glue. Next, use your wood glue sawdust paste to fill in any of the gaps between the butterfly key and the opening that you routed in the previous step. This is just a quick way to fill in any imperfections and make your final product that much more impressive. At this point, I recommend that you give your entire slab a quick sanding with 120 grit sandpaper just to remove any rough edges and make sure that there are no areas that are either high or sticking out further than any adjacent spot. I went the extra mile and did a final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper, but that's optional. Now for the bottom side of the slab, I decided to use some of this water-based polyurethane and just sealed it using this method on the bottom. I applied three coats of the polyurethane using a foam brush on the bottom only. Because I'm going to apply an epoxy finish on the top of my desk, 
I put some painters tape on the bottom just in case any epoxy drips form, I can easily peel them off before it hardens. And as always, before you start using epoxy, I highly recommend that you put some plastic down. So for the top part of my desk, I decided to use Incredible Solutions Tabletop Epoxy. I've used this on a few projects and can definitely recommend it. The mix ratio for the base resin and the curing agent is one to one by volume. So mix equal parts base resin and curing agent in a graduated measuring container. Mix for roughly five to seven minutes and be sure to scrape the sides and bottom of the container as you stir to ensure a thorough mix throughout. It's highly recommended that you transfer the epoxy from one graduated cylinder into another one just to make sure that there are no unmixed areas or air pockets. At this point, apply your epoxy to the edge desk slab. I generally pour out the epoxy from the container directly on the slab and then spread it out with a foam brush. Apply epoxy as required to cover the entire slab, but don't exceed a quarter inch of epoxy thickness. Again, use a foam brush to evenly distribute the epoxy around the entire slab and then let the epoxy do its thing and self-level. As for any epoxy project, as you apply the epoxy with a foam brush, it's very likely that some air bubbles will make their way to the top. That's not a problem, and the way you remove these is by taking a heat gun or a blowtorch and simply bringing the heat on top and near the slab such that the air bubbles rise to the top and then pop. So at this point, I made my way around the entire slab with my blowtorch, making sure that there were no air bubbles, and once I was happy with how everything was looking out, I moved on to the bottom and removed the tape to make sure that there were no epoxy drips that were going to set up and harden on the bottom of my slab. There's really nothing worse than having to grind down epoxy drips, so I definitely recommend that you take this step now to make your life easier once the epoxy is setting up. So after about four to six hours, or once the surface of the epoxy becomes tacky, go ahead and inspect the top layer. If everything looks good with just one coat, you're good to go and you can put on your legs. If there's still some areas that look higher or lower, or there's some divots, what you can do at this point is just apply a second coat of epoxy the exact same way that you did before. So for my desk legs, I went with the Vivo electric desk legs, which allow you to adjust between sitting and standing. And I assembled all those per the manufacturer's instructions. Once they were assembled, I finally took my slab that was completed at this point and positioned it in place on top of the legs. This thing weighed like 80 pounds, so get help if you need it. And once I was happy with how it was lining up on the legs, I made marks through the screw holes with a Sharpie, just indicating the spot that I would be installing the screws later on on the bottom of the slab. Instead of just screwing the desk legs to the slab with standard screws, I chose to use these wood inserts, which would allow me to remove the legs and easily reassemble them in the future if I ever needed to. I marked the depth that I needed to drill with a piece of painter's tape just to make sure that I didn't go too far into the slab. And then I drilled the three holes on each leg on the two sides of the slab. Once I had them drilled, I used a vacuum to remove any debris. At this point, I simply took the wood inserts and I installed them three per each side using an Allen wrench as you're seeing now. Go ahead and make sure that you fasten it all the way down so that it's not protruding out at all. You can see here that it's flush or maybe even a little bit recessed into the slab, which is exactly what you want. Next, I wrestled my 80 pound slab into place for a second time. And once I had it lined up with the wood insert penetrations on the bottom, I screwed it in three per side. The last couple things I needed to do was just attach the electronics for the sit stand portion and then hook up the converter between the sit stand legs and the power source. And as mentioned previously, I paired my new desk with a core chair. The core chair naturally encourages you to sit up straight and also engage your core while you're sitting. And I've had mine for a couple weeks now and can highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Now, without any further ado, let's take a look at the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy content like this, I really would appreciate if you could drop a like down below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and leave a comment on if you like the look of the Live Edge desk slab and if you think it's worth all the effort that went into building it. Again, subscribe if you want to and I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.